Well, the physical scene was of a crowd gathered around for the dedication of the monument, and university undergraduates were in attendance, along with the university faculty and the university president. A number of speeches, but particularly a speech by Julian Carr, who was a noted local businessman, entrepreneur, industrialist, Confederate veteran and leading what would be potentate in the United Confederate Veterans in the state. And he gave a speech in which he framed the significance of the Civil War of the Confederacy and clarified what the meaning of this statue to the University of North Carolina students who had served in the Confederacy. Well, of course, what he's talking about is the contribution of Confederate soldiers to the Ku Klux Klan in reversing the results, uh, or limiting, I should say, the results of the Civil War um, and uh, restoring all-white democratic rule. Another interesting thing about the dedication of Silent Sam is that when uh, Julian Shakespeare Carr made his reference to saving the Anglo-Saxon race, he transitioned immediately to a personal reminiscence of something that he said happened to him right after the war ended and uh, the campus was occupied by about a hundred Union soldiers. Uh, he uh, says in his speech, 100 yards from where we stand, less than 90 days perhaps after my return from Appomattox, I horsewhipped a Negro wench until her skirts hung in shreds, because upon the streets of this quiet village she had publicly insulted and maligned a Southern lady. Well, there you go. He's boasting about an act of violent brutality against a woman, a black woman, uh, supposedly in defense of white womanhood. So those people who say that Silent Sam was put up with the intention of glorifying white supremacy are absolutely right. That was one of the intentions of the people who built the statue. It really became a controversial monument during the 1960s as a result of the transformation of the demography of the UNC student body. When it first became explicitly controversial is probably after the assassination of Martin Luther King, when it was defaced with red paint. And subsequent to that, it became a routine organizing site or routine site for demonstrations dealing with race relations on the campus or in the town of Chapel Hill. I'm Governor Roy Cooper. Last weekend I watched with horror the events in Charlottesville. It was shocking to see the racism, deadly violence, and white supremacy displayed so publicly. It started with a Confederate monument, stone and metal, inanimate, and yet more provocative now than ever. Unlike an African-American father, I'll never have to explain to my daughters why there exists a monument for those who wish to keep her and her ancestors in chains. Some people cling to the belief that the Civil War was fought over states' rights, but history's not on their side. We can't continue to glorify a war against the United States of America fought in the defense of slavery. These monuments should come down. Our Civil War history is important but it belongs in textbooks and museums.